Hello everyone, welcome to lecture 3.3, which is focused on solving the inverse of a matrix using LU decomposition. And the main advantage of this approach is that it saves time with less computation when compared with basically Gaussian elimination alone. So what is the inverse of a matrix and how does it kind of look when we have say a coefficient matrix A? The basic thing is, if I have a coefficient matrix A, and I multiply it by the inverse of A, then what I get is the identity matrix. So for example, if we had a three by three coefficient matrix, so we have A11, A12, and recall, the first number is the row number, the second number is the column number. All right, so then this next one would be A13, and then this would be the second row. So second row is two, first column one, second row still, second column, and then second row, third column. Again here, third row, so three, first column one, and then here A, third row, second column, and then A, three, three, third row, third column. So this is our kind of coefficient matrix A. Now what we need to solve for is the inverse. And in this case, the inverse is what is unknown. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna basically call it x11, x12, x13, and so on. And this is gonna equal to the identity matrix where for a three by three, we're gonna have basically a three by three here and everything else so one's along the diagonal, and then zeros everywhere else. So what we do to kind of solve this type of problem is we're going to split the problem into three problems where we solve for one column at a time in this inverse, and we use one column at a time from the identity matrix. So the first problem would be using these two, the second problem would be using these two, and then the third problem would be using basically the last uh, column from the inverse and the last column from the identity matrix. So again, this is the inverse and this is the identity matrix. All right, so let's split the problem and show how this would look like. We're gonna split the problem into three portions or problems. And in the first step, so first step, we're gonna take our coefficient matrix, so A11, A12, A13, and so on. And for the X or the inverse, we're only gonna take the first column, so X11, X21, and x31 and we're going to make this equal to the first column from the identity matrix which is 1 0 and 0 so then just like before right from the last lecture we're going to be using lu decomposition so using lu what we're going to have is lu x equals b right where we have ux is d and we solve for, essentially from, from this problem, the x vector. So get x. So this would be basically the first column in the inverse. So then we have to do this for the other columns. So the second step would be Again, using the same coefficient matrix, A11, A12, A13, and so on. And then what we do in this case, we're gonna take the second column from our inverse matrix, which is X12, X22, and X32. And this is gonna to equal to the second column in the inverse, so 010. 
0, 1, 0. Again, we solve for x. The x vector. And then the last step, which is the third step. In this case, we're going to take again the coefficient matrix. And then we're going to use the last row in the inverse matrix, which is what we see here. And then the last row from the identity matrix, which is 0, 0, and 1. Again, we solve for x. And if we do these three steps, then we combine these x vectors together, and that will give us the inverse. So let's do a problem to demonstrate this. We have a practice problem. And we're going to solve for the inverse of the following coefficient matrix A, which is 1, negative 1, 1, and negative 1, 3, negative 2, 1, negative 3, and 4. And this is exactly the same coefficient matrix that we had in the last lecture. So we can directly kind of write what the L, L a lower triangular matrices. So it was 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, and we had negative 1, 1, negative 1, and then the upper triangular was, in this case, 1, negative 1, and 1, 0, 0, 0, and we had a 2, negative 1, and 2. So typically, these would not be given, right? So these two here typically are not given. So you need to solve for them in a typical problem. And just for reference sake, you know, the answer to this problem, if you want to try it out before watching the entire video, is just go through uh, the steps that we learned last class and try to solve for the inverse. And you should get the following values if you tried it out. All right, so this is basically, in this case, uh, the answer to this problem. All right, so let's actually do the problem together in this case. So if you try it, you can try it out if you'd like. Uh, otherwise, uh, if you still don't feel comfortable, then you can watch the rest of this. So solving for inverse, again, what we're going to do is we're going to go with step one. And we're going to have coefficient matrix A multiplied by x11, x21, x31, which is the first column in the inverse matrix, right? So this is here first column in inverse, A inverse. And this is going to equal, right, the first column in the identity matrix, which is 1, 0, and 0. All right, so we, we have our coefficient matrix A. We have the L and U. What we're going to do is we're going to solve for, as we mentioned earlier up here, we're going to solve for D first. And then once we have D, then we can solve for X using UX equals D. All right. So solving for D, what we have is LD equals to B. So we write down the lower triangular and we have the following. And in here we have, we can say D1, D2, and D3. And this is going to equal 1, 0, 0. So from the first row, we can see that D1 is equal to simply 1. From the second row, 
right? We have a D2 is equal to one. And then from the third row, you know, you can do the math, you can find that D3 is equal to zero. Again, I'm not going to go through all of the steps in this case because I've already covered this in the previous lecture. So if you're not sure how we got these, go review the last lecture and uh, come back and try this yourself. Now the next step would be to do ux equals d. So now we write down the upper triangular. So we have 1, negative 1, and 1. We have you know the zeros here. And then here we have 2, negative 1, and 2. And then we have our D matrix, which is, uh, you know, what this is equal to. So the D matrix goes here, one, one, zero. And then we have the X, which is the unknown in this case, which is the first row in our inverse matrix. All right, so you do the math in this case, and you'll find that uh, X1, one is gonna, uh, sorry, you're gonna start off with x31 first so x31 is going to equal to 0 then you're going to have x21 is going to equal to half and then x11 is also going to be equal to uh, sorry x11 is going to be equal to 3 over 2 now you do the second step so now we take the second column from the inverse matrix and the second column from the identity matrix. So now second column of the inverse of A, and we take B as the second column from the identity matrix, which is 0, 1, 0. So again, we do LD equals B, and we write down the lower triangular, so 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0. We have negative 1, 1, and negative 1. And this is multiplied by D1, D2, D3. And this will give us B, which is 0, 1, 0. You do the math. You find out D1 is equal to 0. D2 is equal to 1. And D3 is equal to 1 as well. So then, again, just like in the previous step, we do UX equals D. And we write down the upper triangular. So 1, negative 1, and 1. 0, 2, and negative 1. 0, 0, 2. And then we have our second row. x12, x22, and x32. From the inverse matrix. And this is going to equal uh, 0, 1, 1. Which is our basically d vector. Which we got from there. So then we solve for, you know, x uh, three two first, and we get half. Then we solve for x two two, we get three over four, and then we solve for x one two, and we get one over four. So in the same way, you're gonna do the third column of the inverse matrix A, and in this case, B is gonna be the last column in the identity matrix, which is 0, 0, 1. And in this case, uh, X uh, that we're trying to solve for, right, is the last, you know, column in the inverse matrix, which is first row, third column, second row, third column, third row, third column. All right, so we, you apply the same thing again, LD equals B, and you put in the lower triangular, so 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, negative 1, 1, negative 1. You have your D matrix here, D1, D2, D3, and then you have your B in this case, which is 0, 0, 1. And then you solve for D1 first, and you get D1 is 0. Then you solve for D2, you get D2 is 0. So for D3, and you get that, that it's 1. And then the last step would be to use UX equals D. And you have here the upper triangular again, negative 1, 1, 0, 2, negative 1, 0, 0, 2. 
and we have our you know last column in the inverse so x13 x23 and x33 and this is going to equal to our d vector that we got we got here which is 0 0 and 1 and from this we find that uh, x33 is half x23 is one fourth and x13 from the first row here is going to give us negative one over four now we combine all of the x vectors that we solve for and we call that our inverse matrix a and just simply we put in the values so three over two if you go back up here right three over two half and zero so three over two half and zero and then the second row would be the second and what we solved for in the second step so a quarter three fourth and half so one fourth three fourth and a half and then what we got in the last step here would be what's in the last column. So negative 1 over 4, 1 over 4, and half. So this is the inverse solved using LU decomposition.